hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Daryl Taylor and on today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this two-piece rushed bubu kaftan and if this is something you're interested in learning how to sew then just keep watching these are the fabrics I'm working with this cord lace you can see here is two yards and then this flowery material is three yards because I'm going to be sewing mine as a gown rather than a skirt I went ahead to start by folding the front into two so it's on fold and then the back is also on fold I left about one and a half inch for my zipper allowance area and I turned it open and of course I have my desired length my desired length is 55 inches so I just imputed that I started off by marking three and a half inches for my neck width for the front and the back and after marking it I came down by seven inches that's the neck depth for the back I wanted the back to be a deep neck so the neck depth for the back was seven inches and I just marked it at that point I then went ahead to use my curve root to connect it with the neck with thus connecting the three and a half to my seven inches neck depth. Now the front depth is five inches. Remember the back is deeper than the front. I just marked five inches and then I'm also going to be connecting it with the three and a half inches that we have. I went ahead to place my tape on the front part and then I took my measurement, my shoulder measurement divided by 2 which was 14 divided by 2 and that was giving me 7 inches. I then came down by 1 inches for my shoulder slope. I came down by 1 inches and then I'm going to be connecting that 1 inch to my neck width and it gave me like a slanted line. From the point that we came down by 1 inches, that point, I'm going to be coming down again by 7 inches which will represent my armhole length. I came down from that point where we marked 1 inches, I came down by 7 inches which will represent my armhole length and then I went ahead to mark 7 inches at that bottom point so that I'll be able to connect the lines together. And after connecting the lines, I just used my free hand to connect the line. This is what it was looking like after I connected the lines together. I just elongated the line a little more. I elongated the line and after doing that, this is my armhole length. I'm going to get the division of it. 7 divided by 2 was 3 and a half and then I marked 3 and a half at that point. You could see where I marked 3 and a half. I divided my armhole length which was 7 inches into 2 and it gave me 3 and a half. And then from that point where I marked 3 and a half, I came in by half an inch. From the point I marked 3 and a half, I came in by half an inch. I hope you understand. And then from this bottom point of my armhole length where my armhole length started from i came down and i measured my bust circumference divided by four i measured my bust circumference divided by four and then i marked it at that point from the bottom point of my armhole i measured my bust circumference divided by four and then i'm going to be connecting it with this our new line i'm going to be connecting it with this our new line so using my curve rule i connected it does half an inch we came in by with my bust circumference length so i just connected it you can see the way connected it after connecting it i went ahead to connect it to the top point also you can just watch the way i connected it i connected it with the top point now this is going to form our new armhole length so this is our new armhole curve next thing that we are going to do is to place our tape at the shoulder area and i'm going to be measuring my shoulder to my waist length my shoulder to my waist length was about 14 inches and then i marked 14 inches at that point after marking 14 inches as my waist to shoulder length i went ahead to take my waist circumference at the point where i marked 14 inches and you can see i indicated that the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to be connecting it with my bust circumference which is this so using my ruler i went ahead to connect it and it gave me a slanted line For my hip length, I placed my tape on the shoulder area and then I came down by 23 inches as the hip length and then after marking it, I'm also going to be dividing my hip circumference by 4. That is my hip circumference was 36, 36 divided by 4 and then I'm also going to be connecting it with the waistline using my tape. 
this chopped area is my shoulder to on top of my knee and then the circumference I'm going to be using for it is my hip circumference minus 6 inches my hip is 36 36 minus 6 inches and it gave me 30 and then I divided it by 4 and then I'm going to be connecting it together this just kind of give it a beautiful shape when you do this so that's just what I did like I said my hip circumference minus 6 inches that's 30 inches then I divided it by 4 giving me 7 and a half and then after connecting it I'm going to be going all the way down by my normal hip circumference and after I was done I just went ahead to cut out my neckline you can see the way I'm cutting I first of all went ahead to cut out the front neckline and then I'm going to be turning it over to cut out the back neckline you guys if you're watching this video please do not forget to like and also subscribe after cutting it this is what it was looking like you can see the beautiful shape it gave me at the knee area so you can just use this technique to achieve a beautiful pencil gown or a pencil skirt and you can also see that I went ahead to add about two and a half inches allowance for all sides that's the waist, the bust and the hip line and also the knee line I also went ahead to add about two and a half inch allowance for all of it I am going to start by stitching my zipper allowance area and I'm going to be stitching it and stopping at where I want my slits to stop. So where I wanted my slits to stop was I marked from my shoulder to 36 inches and this was 36 inches that you can see the chalked area. And after stitching it you can see the lines that we made over here. I stopped at the area that I chalked. That is, that is where I want my slits to, what, to start from. Now after doing that you can see the opening that is there. I went ahead to fold one part of it and I also went ahead to fold the bottom part of it so I'm going to be showing you how I did my folding on the other parts for this part you would want to start by opening up the slitted area that's the place we stopped the 36 inches we stopped at so I opened it up remember that part is opened the first thing you do is to fold the bottom part that's one part of it so after folding that part the next part remember this slitted area is like it's not folded you're just going to fold it just watch the way I am folding it you are going to be starting directly where the 36 inches stopped at so you're going to start folding directly where the 36 inches stopped at this area right that I pointed with my fingers that is where you are going to start folding and then you're just going to stitch those lines you are going to stitch these lines and this is what is looking like I turned it to the front and this is what is looking like after stitching it you can see how the back is looking like so that was how I was able to achieve an open slit I also went ahead to fold the bottom part of my front. This is the front area. I folded it just like we did for the back. And I also stitched the shoulder area together. That's the front and the back shoulder together. You can see the stitches I made on them. The next thing we're going to be doing is to be using our cutting bias to cover the neckline of the front and the back area. I opened up a little part of my zipper allowance and then I'm going to start from that zipper allowance area and start stitching the cutting bias together and then I'm going to be turning it over to the next cut, um, zipper allowance area and after doing this this is what it was looking like you can see how neat the finishing is looking like now for the armhole area we're also going to be folding up the armhole area for a neat finishing I already went ahead to fold this part up I'm going to be showing you how I folded this part up using the other part that is not yet folded now for this part remember we've not yet folded this part I'm going to be showing you how to fold it the first thing you want to do is to open it up and then you are going to start folding just watch the way I am folding you are going to start folding from one point of the armhole area to the other point and after folding it this is what it was looking like I'm going to start putting my dart and what I did is I placed my tape on my shoulder area and then I came down by 13 inches. I came down by 13 inches for the dart area for the back, that's the length for the back and then the width of it is going to be my nipple to nipple measurement. My nipple to nipple measurement was 7 and a half, sorry it was 7 inches, 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half and then for the length of the darts I came down by 8 inches from the point where my darts started from so this is 8 inches in length for the darts for the back and then I'm just marking 3 and a half inches for the width of my darts you know how you get it is through your nipple to nipple measurement so that was just what I did and your dart is going to start from your under bust that is for the front part for the front part your dart is going to start directly below your under bust area and this is what is looking like 
after I was done drafting it and I also repeated the same process here I marked 8 inches as the dart length and you know how we cut 8 inches and then for the width I used my nipple to nipple measurement divided by 2 To stitch it, I'm going to go in by about half an inch to stitch it, stopping at the area of the chalk line. I'm going to be stitching both sides and after stitching it, this is what it's looking like. I also repeated the same process for the front part. I told you where your dart is going to start from the front part is from your under bust. I also went ahead to impute my body measurement and then I stitched the areas. I imputed my body measurement and I stitched the areas where I imputed my body measurement. You could see the both areas are now stitched together. This is the dart line for the front and this is how the front is looking like. I told you to get your dart, all you just have to do is from your under bust, that is where you start your dart length from. So this is what it's looking like after I was done stitching everything and this is how the gown is looking like. The next part is for the bubble caftan. Now this is what I'm going to be using for the bubble caftan, the cordless. And this cordless, all I just did was to divide it into two, giving me one yard for the front, one yard for the back. This is two yards of cordless, but it's really small. You can use three yards. Three yards is preferable to give you the results you want. So this is on four. The front and the back are on four. There is no zipper allowance for it. What I just did was to take the whole width and this was 15 inches you can see what it was giving me it was giving me 15 inches and now for the neckline width what i'm going to take is two half quarter of an inch two and half then quarter that's just what i mean two and half then quarter remember this is a total neck so it should not be too wide it should not even be wide at all so i took two and half then quarter and then for the neckline depth for the back i used one inches for the front don't worry i'm going to explain how i got the front the front i'm using two and a half for the front i used my tape i came down by two and a half and i connected it with my neckline width you can see three inches here but i later realized three inches was too much i then came up by two and a half so this is just what i did here at this point as the shoulder area i'm going to be coming down by eight inches as my round sleeve so i came down by eight inches as my round sleeve that's how wide you want your sleeve to be i just i just kept going in by the eight inches that is my round sleeve then at the bottom point i'm going to go ahead to measure my bust circumference and i'm going to be going all the way down by that remember what you use for your bust is what you use for your waist and your hip too is the same measurement so this one is 11 inches that i'm working with like i said in my other videos how you would get your kaftan measurements is your hip circumference divided by four your hip circumference divided by four plus four i hope you understand that your hip circumference if it's 36 that this is divided by four that is divided by four is nine nine plus four is what you are going to go all the way down you understand like I said, I came all the way down by my 11 inches length and I then went ahead to cut out the excesses. So this is what it's looking like after I was done cutting it out. I also went ahead to cut out my neckline area. So this is it. So for the back, I just turned it to the back and I came down by 4 inches at the shoulder area. This is the 4 inches I chalked. And then using my scissors, I'm going to be cutting it open. Because this is a total neck and it has to have like an opening on it. So I just seared it open. So you can and see what i did here and after i was done doing that i just opened it up so this is what it's looking like after i was done doing that the next thing we are going to be doing is to be stitching the shoulder areas together that's the front and the back shoulder area together i stitched the shoulder part and then i'm also going to be stitching the side area for this side area now we are not going to be adding any slits to it because we are going to be rushing it we are not going to be adding any sleeve to it and then for the sleeve area i used my cutting bias to turn the sleeve over i used my cutting bias to turn the sleeve over so you can see what it's looking like after i was done doing that the same way i turn the sleeve over with my cutting bias that's this cutting bias that is about one inch i'm going to be using it to turn the neck the back neck over remember this back neck that we teared open by coming down by four inches we are going to be turning it over with our cutting bias and this is what it was looking like after we were done doing that so you can see what it was looking like after we were done doing that 
Next thing I'm going to do is to measure out my neckline measurement. So from the place we tied open to the next area, that's the whole neckline measurement. This will help me to be able to tell the what I'm using to the measurement I'm using to cut my turtleneck. Remember, this is a turtleneck that we are cutting, and I got 19 and a half over here. So that is what we are going to be using to take our turtleneck. Now this is what I'm going to be using just for illustration and after using that I'll transfer it to the suede I'm going to be using for it. So what I just first of all did was to fold it in a triangular form. So the first thing you have to do when you're cutting your turtleneck is to fold it into a triangular form. So I hope you understand just the normal way you would cut your flare, your adult flare, that is the same way you would do it. All you have to do is to divide your neckline circumference into two. That is 19 and a half for me, divided by two. And what you get, you are going to be adding two inches allowance to it. So mine was 11 inches, and then I just marked it in a straight line. From the point of that, our triangle we formed, I just marked 11 inches. You are going to find where your 11 inches is, and you are going to mark it in a straight line, just as I did. And after doing that, what you want to do is to come up by your desired turtleneck width. Mine was two inches but I added half an inch for stitching allowance making it two and a half so I just came all the way up by two and a half inch so just watch the way I'm doing it I came all the way up by two and a half inch and I connected it it also gave me a straight line so you can see the line we formed we now have two lines so from this point of two and a half inch that we marked I came on top of that my tape on top of that and then I'm marking two and a half inch again I'm going down by two and a half inch again you had it right the essence of this is to give it a total neck curve is to give it a curve so you could see the curve it formed just by placing my tape on the two and a half inch we marked at us so you just watch what i'm doing you guys you can now see the curve that i am talking about just by going down by two and a half inch again you can see the difference it makes so it is important that you take this step i'm going to go ahead to trim out everything that i got over here like i said you can see the curve i got After I was done cutting, this is what it was looking like. So you would want to cut out another part as your lining. So it's supposed to be two. It is supposed to be two, having two because of your lining. So you are going to be cutting out exactly the same part. Now this black suede is what I'm going to be using for my cordless. All I just did was to place out the pattern on top of my suede and then I cut it out. I'm going to be cutting another one for this one too for the sake of the lining part. And I also added hair stay for strength to it. I hope you understand that. I'm going to go ahead to attach this neckline over here to it. I'm going to be attaching my pattern to the neckline area. So I'm going to do it and come back. And after doing it, this is what it was looking like, guys. You can see what is looking like, what our um, total neck is looking like. And I'm also going to be attaching bra hook to it. I'm going to be attaching bra hook to it. This is the hook that I attached to it. You can see it. So this is just what is looking like for this outfit over here. I also added a band to the sleeve area. My hand was too short. That the sleeve part was too short. So I just added a band using my um suede to the sleeve area. So the next thing we're going to do is to rush it out now. The first thing you want to do is to open up your kaftan and this is what it's looking like after I opened it up. I then came down by the length I wanted my rush to start from. So where you want your rush to start from, mine was 18 inches. So that was where I wanted mine to start from. So yours can differ. So after doing it, I went ahead to mark a straight line across it. You can see the line I marked at, across it. The next thing I just did was to cut the middle part of my kaftan. So I got the middle part of my kaftan so you can see what I did and I used my chop to mark a straight loop on it so you could see the line we have now so this is just it I'm going to be going all the way down by my midpoint of my kaftan I'm going to be going all the way down by the middle point of my kaftan I hope you understand that I'm going all the way to the bottom part because that is what we are going to be using to be calculating so I'm going all the way down by the middle point Point and then at this middle point, that's where the rush is starting from. I hope you understand that. I'm going to be going by six inches at the right side. I marked six inches at the right side, and then I'm also going to be doing the same thing at the left hand side. So I marked six inches at the right side, and I'm also going to be marking six inches at the left hand side also. 
now this middle point we are going to be connecting it to the extreme end of the bottom point now this six inches that we cut that's what i mean i'm going to be connecting it to this bottom point i hope you understand to the extreme end of my bottom point that's close to the area that we stitched we are going to be connecting it to that i hope you understand that so i'm just going to be connecting it and as i was connecting it it was giving me like a slanted line from that six inches i connected it to the extreme end of my bottom point that's the extreme and close to the area that we stitched after doing that just the normal way that you watch your dress i just place the bottom point on top of the upper point you can see the way i'm doing just watch what i'm doing i just place it on top of the chalked area and then i'm going to be stitching that part i'm going to stitch it to secure it and then i place the next one on top of the other one that we rushed and i'm going to be stitching it too you have to make sure that the chalk areas are aligning with each other you have to make sure the chalk areas are meeting up with each other just watch what i'm doing the, after you do you stitch after you do you just stitch together so this chalk area you have to make sure that they're meeting up with each other i hope you understand that you have to make sure the chalk areas are meeting up with each other you just go ahead and keep watching it until you reach the bottom point so just watch what i'm doing so i'm just going to do it again for you to say so that you just have a better understanding so we are going to be starting from like i said the area you want your rush to start from this area this six inches that we mark and then remember this is a slanted line so what you are just trying to do is to make sure that the slanted line are meeting the whole chopped areas so i started by placing the bottom point on top of where i wanted my rush to start i then placed this area again this bottom point on top of the other bottom point i hope you understand that the chalk areas are supposed to be meeting each other if not it is not correct so i made sure the chalked areas are meeting each other that's the white areas are meeting each other and then i'm going to be carrying another one again and then the more you do you just stitch the more you do you stitch and then i'm going to be placing it on top of it again making sure the chalked areas are meeting each other you understand using my fingers as a gesture if I place it like this, you can see the chopped areas are not meeting each other. It is not correct. So you have to make sure the chopped areas are what's meeting each other. And then you're just going to keep doing this until you reach the extreme bottom points of this. And as you do, you stitch. And then after doing this, you just stitch it. But you have to pin them first before you do it. I'm going to be repeating the same thing on this other side. I hope you understand that. You guys this is what it was looking like after i was done dripping it so we are currently done with this tutorial i hope you understood everything and in case you do not understand any part of it make sure you type it down on the comment section and i would answer you right away see you guys on my next tutorial bye for now